In this video, we're going to discuss how to compute bond angles from Cartesian XYZ coordinates. So the first example that we're going to use is water, H2O. So I got that in Avogadro here, and if I use the measurement tool, I can click 1, 2, 3, and at the bottom I see that my bond distances are 0.97 angstroms, and my bond angle is 109.5 degrees. So I have uh, obviously some Cartesian coordinates which that comes from so we're gonna see how do we calculate that uh, in this video okay so a bond angle is just an angle between three Cartesian points and or two vectors okay so knowing that we're gonna have examples like as we said there, H2O, OHH, where our theta bond angle, theta HOH, is defined in the middle there, just so we're clear. And then we can also generalize that to atom names like IJK, where I have atoms I, J, and K. And then I have bond vectors R, J, I, and R, J, K, pointing from J to K and from J to I. I, J would be the reverse. K, J would be the reverse. Okay, so these vectors that we have defined here are can be defined in terms of their Cartesian uh, unit vector components. So the vector R, I, J, for a general uh, I and J, where those represent uh, two atomic indices, is X, J minus X, I times X hat, the, the X unit vector, plus Y, J minus Y, I times Y hat, the Y unit vector, plus Z, J minus Z, I times the Z unit vector. Okay, and for all unit vectors, uh, we note that for a unit vector, which is r hat, some vector with a hat on it that I've got here, i, j, the magnitude of it indicated by these double bars on each side equals 1. Okay. We're also going to define and remind ourselves, hopefully, of what the dot product of two vectors is. So the dot product for two vectors A and B, A dot B, equals, if they are 3D Cartesian vectors, AX times BX plus AY times BY plus AZ times BZ. Okay, and also the magnitude of the vector is what we previously defined in the video on bond length. If we go ahead and define that again, just for good measure, magnitude of Rij is equal to Xj. Oop, really missed that one there. Okay, Xj minus Xi squared plus Yj minus Yi squared plus zj minus zi squared. And then take that all to the one-half power, taking the square root of all of it. Okay, so now if we look at our definition for the dot product in terms of uh, two actual vectors, so if we look at that, we can see that r hat, or not r hat, yeah, not yet, rji dot r JK, if we compare all these definitions, should be able to convince ourselves for these vectors here, if I make that a better dot, that we have the, the magnitude of RJI times the magnitude of RJK times the cosine of theta i j k which i do not believe i ended up labeling 
up in my diagram, so let me go ahead and do that. Okay, theta i j k. And this again is just from the definition of a dot product for two vectors. Okay, so this gives us something that we can work with here, because now we've got the cosine of what this theta i j k is. So now if we can isolate this cosine, we can get to what this theta is. Okay, so now if we take each of these uh, values here and divide them by their magnitudes, uh, you'll notice that we'll divide out the magnitudes on both sides and we'll isolate the cosines. But conveniently enough for us, we also have another relationship that rji over its magnitude, over the magnitude of rji, that is equal to r hat ji. So we said for a given unit vector, the magnitude is 1. So in this case, it's true by definition because if we take our vector and we divide by its magnitude, we're going to get a vector whose magnitude is 1. So similarly for j i and r j k, if we divide both of them by their magnitudes, then we end up with the given unit vectors r hat j i and j k. And if we've divided both sides of these by their magnitudes, and we've divided this side by their magnitude, then we have eliminated this. And what we're left with is a nice formula, which will have r hat j i dot r hat j k equals cosine of theta i j k. Okay, so now all we have to do is take the arc cosine, take the inverse of our cosine, and we'll have our final result that theta i j k is equal to the arc cosine, or cosine minus 1, of r hat j i dot r hat j k. Okay, so now again, as we noted with bonds, we want to note what's the domain and what are the restrictions that occur in these cases. So we have 0 is less than or equal to theta i j k, which is less than or equal to 180 degrees, or from 0 to pi in radians. We also have the caveat that theta i j k equals theta k j i. So if we were going through all uh, all triplet sets of atoms in a particular molecule, we would want to make sure we didn't double count by counting uh, 1, 2, 3, and 3, 2, 1, as would be the case for our water molecule there. And there it is, as we saw, 1, 2, 3. Okay, what else do we want to note here? Um, for any kind of triplet set of atoms, there's also the restriction that these three uh, atoms form a triangle there. So we have the case that theta ijk plus theta kji plus theta jik is going to have to equal 180 degrees by definition because these three angles form a triangle. Now usually they won't all be bonded to one another unless you have something like a cyclopropane, but just something to keep in mind. And we're also going to only count bond angles if uh, I is bonded to J and if J is bonded to K. So only count if RIJ is a bond and RJK is also a bond. R bonds. So if I go to my web browser here, uh, you'll notice this uh, URL I've got listed here. This is These are the notes that I'm basing the program that I'm going to be building for all of this uh, geometry analysis off of, uh, coming from David Sherrill at Georgia Institute of Technology. So you can, if you're interested in following along with these Python tutorials, you can follow along at these notes at that URL. I also have a GitHub for this channel where this code is going to be located as well. If you click on computational chemistry, in the scripts directory. Um, I have the bonds, um, the code from the previous video, and the uh, angles, 
Pi is going to be the code from this video as well. So that's the stuff that I'm going to be demoing here in my uh, Jupyter notebook. So I've got uh, inside the various folders here the XYZ uh, Cartesian coordinates of that water molecule that we had from Avogadro are here. What I have is a script that is now called angles.py. If this will load, let's see. Okay, so it's a lot of the same stuff you see from the previous video on the bonds.py that I demoed on the previous video, plus some stuff added to it. It does all that functionality and more. The new things include, uh, now I need a conversion from radians to degrees and vice versa because of the way the uh, functions within Python work. I've also imported the math module so I can use things like sine and cosine. Let's see, same as before for those two functions. Um, that function is still the same as well. Um, print geometry, print bond tree, print bonds. I have a new function here which is going to print out all the angles that we find. Printed there. Get R12. I have a new function for calculating the unit vector between two Cartesian coordinates. You calculate the vector and then divide by the bond length that you get from the get R12. I have a function for getting the dot product between two unit vectors. Um, a cross product, not sure I need that yet, but I guess it snuck in there. Okay, uh, angles, uh, get the angle between three sets of Cartesian coordinates. So that'll get those unit vectors, do the dot product, and then do the arc cosine there, that math.a cos. And then same functions, bond tree, bonds, and then given the bond tree, figuring out what the angles are, those things where I had sets of ij and jk both bonded to each other, that's what's in these nested for loops there. And then in my main block, it's the same stuff as before, but I'm including uh, the angles and printing the angles as well. So for this H2O, everything I've described, we can now calculate our bond angles from those based off of the description and all the formulas we just derived. So if I go up here, uh, notice that I've already executed it, but I'll execute it again, going shift enter, and my computer is being slow, but there it is, printing out the initial geometry, which is the same as I had from the file. And then found two bonds, one, two, and one, three, both 0.97 angstroms, as Avogadro said. And I also had an angle that was 109 point, uh, also consistent with the predictions of Avogadro. So we have, su we have successfully defined uh, all of the values that we need for predicting Nope, nope, don't want that. So we've, we've successfully defined all the values that we need to compute bond angles for a given molecule.